Hi, I'm Gerald Ungerman, and this is Tessie Ware. We are from Chico, California, and together we've created an ongoing series online called Respectful Revolution. And one of the really interesting aspects of this project is that Gerard travels around the country gathering footage for our videos, and he travels on the back of this Harley Davidson. Hi, I'm Olga Boff and we're in the city of St. Petersburg and we want to keep St. Petersburg local. Hi, my name is Kendrick Perkins. I'm from New Orleans and I am into youth advocacy. Uh, I'm at Archuleta. I'm from El Paso, Texas, and I have a passion for managing water, particularly in areas that have scarcity. Hi, my name is Samantha Zangrilli and I live in Chico, California, and I organize the Bicycle Chico Bicycle Music Festival. Hi, my name is Ron Chirillo. We are here in Taos, New Mexico, and I build her ships. Hello, my name is Brian McGinnis. I'm from Mandan, North Dakota, and I'm an organic vegetable farmer. Hello, I'm Todd Miller, and I build tiny homes for a living, and I'm in Eugene, Oregon. The idea of traveling around the country for Respectful Revolution is to find people who do good things for others, society, nature, and the world, and interview them on camera and then cut vignettes which are typically five to seven minutes where a person explains what they're doing, why they're doing it and who they are with the idea for us to not just present to the public what they're doing but also to inspire other people to perhaps do something similar. We want to inspire people into changing attitudes and creating the kind of world that we are all longing for. Well, I'm living here on the side of the mountain, 5,500 feet above the Owens Valley. And for three years, uh, we've been building soil from horse manure and um, brown carbon material that we find here on the property, organic. Uh, we use water in a tractor and we turn and we build soil and we deliver it to anybody in the southern end of Inyo County uh, who wants to grow food. The project itself is inspiring because we come into contact with really, I would say, the best possible people that are out there. They're all selfless, action-oriented, doing something uh, respectful to make the world a better place. They're not doing it to make money, they're not doing it to be famous, they're just doing it because they want to contribute and make this country and the world better. So that in and of itself is inspiring. Then working alongside Gerard is also really inspiring because I always joke around about it. I always say he's a maniac, <laughs> he's maniacal because he works so hard, but it's because he's so excited. You know, he's so enthusiastic. It's hard not to be inspired when you're working alongside someone like that. This trip is absolutely beautiful and I do it on this motorcycle to make it an adventure, to make it something which for me is much more enjoyable and I sort of feel that it's important to find fun and adventure in whatever it is that you're doing. And with this particular trip, Respect to Revolution, the idea for us also is to demonstrate that it's possible to do something and go places using less resources, spending less money, and this is exactly what I'm doing with this particular Harley Davidson. So let's look at the bike now. I would like to present you my uh, Harley Davidson Sportster that I'm using to do this, uh, this project. Again, I picked this bike for a very good reason. A set of, I hope, good reasons. A, I wanted to, to, to pick an American-made motorcycle. It's part of uh, what we try to show in our project. We try to promote the idea of made in USA or made wherever you are, you know, producing locally, supporting local labor. So that's why I picked a Harley Davidson first of all. It's also kind of a mythical bike to be on the road around the country. It is part of it. And I picked this very particular model, a Harley Sportster 83, because it's an extremely efficient motorcycle. Some people say this bike is too small for the high road. I want to say that it's completely inaccurate. 883cc is still more than most bikes around the world, first of all. 
and for a single person it is perfectly adequate. The main feature of this bike and the feature I was actually after is the fuel efficiency. This motorcycle, if I keep it around 60, 65 miles on the road, give me anywhere between 57 and 63 miles per gallon. It's outstanding. If I average, say, 60 miles per gallon, that means that if I pay $4 right now for a gallon of gas, covering 6,000 miles is going to cost me about $400. That's about a third of what an average car will give you. It's about half of what you would spend running a bigger motorcycle and riding it fast without caring about fuel consumption. I'm extremely careful. I pay attention to air resistance. I have no intention of burning more money than I need to burn. First of all, I don't have that much money. And then I'd rather keep it for something else. So that's why I keep this bike at 60 miles per hour on average. I want to draw your attention to the fact that, along with my uh, messenger bag, you know, right, right here, this is all that I carry for two, three, four months on the road. And I'm set, considering that I'm also carrying a camera, a sound equipment, I'm carrying my computer, I'm carrying a projector for public presentations and a little sound system. I have my clothes for two months and I also have camping equipment. I have a tent, I have a sleeping bag, a sleeping paddle. I have a rain cover for the bike right underneath here and a tool bag on my fork and this is all I need for two months. Just about to begin a long crazy journey with a lot of gear on a small bike Let's see how this all pans. When we first started out and he was undertaking the first trip, and he started in Daytona Beach, Florida, and he was going to be on the bike for a long time, like three and a half months or something, and put thousands of miles on it, coming back to San Francisco and gathering footage along the way, I thought by the time he gets home, he's gonna be done. He's gonna have had enough of being on the back of the Harley and we can just move on and we'll, you know, get a trailer or something. I, I didn't know what I thought, but I thought for sure he wouldn't wanna do that again. But just the opposite was true. He was so excited that he traveled so far on so little gas and he saw the country, I mean, let's face it, we live in an incredibly beautiful country. He was totally hooked. Not only had he not had enough of it, he, he wanted more. <laughs> so it turns out that that was going to become kind of what seems to be a permanent fixture of the project from now on. We need to cultivate a sense of beauty, happiness, a sense of belonging and traveling a lot on a motorcycle around the United States, for me, it's also a way to cultivate beauty. I've been in the US since 1991, and I've been working in different types of media, both print and, uh, and video and film, actually, since uh, the early 1990s. I started doing documentary films in 1995 and I've always done it ever since. I just love the medium. It's something which is easy to do on your own and I think images carry a lot of weight. I moved to Chico, California in 2008 and I started doing this project Respectful Revolution with my, my partner, my girlfriend, Stacy, in 2012. And uh, basically, to me, it's all about doing what I 
know how to do, sort of. At least I do the best I can, uh, doing video, producing, uh, shooting, editing, and then putting together our project online. And I do it in a way that to me makes sense to do what we care about doing, and that's contributing to making the world a better place by shining light on people doing good things, as opposed to always looking at uh, horrible stories and things that make you depressed and ashamed of being a human being. I think it's much, much better to look at things that make your day brighter and contribute to making the world a better place, a happier place. And I do it also by injecting what I love doing most. I like being on two wheels. I've always liked bicycles or motorcycles. I like to be outside. I like to feel the wind. And uh, to me, it's a passion. And essentially, doing something that makes me feel happy and proud and strong put me in a place where life is so much better. And I just want to bring as many people as possible through the work that we do in this very same place so we can simply feel happier to be a part of this beautiful world.
So now I would like to show you a few features of this motorcycle. Like most Harley Davidson, you want to customize your bike both for convenience and also for, for looks. That's what makes them unique. So starting from the front of the bike, I installed some uh, Michelin Commander 2 tires, which are extremely durable on the road, last for a very long time, on a Renegade wheel made in USA in uh, Los Angeles, very high quality. I have uh, progressive suspensions, progressive being the brand, uh, both front and back, absorb a lot of shocks. I love these suspensions. I have here a tool bag made by my friend Nancy Rogers in Montegu, Northern California. This headset here is made by Headwind, also in the USA with a candle light bulb, extremely powerful, so much more powerful than the, the stock light on the Sportster. Uh, Harley Davidson windshield. Here a bag made by Leather Work Inc. out of uh, Stockton with my, my rain gear. And boy, that rain gear is so, 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 so critical. I've been caught in some rains which are just completely biblical. Um, I have here a set of PIA fog lights which give me a lot of added brightness at night and also allow people to have a better sense of how far and how fast I am at night. These, these bars here are lean bars, crash bars that allow to also rest your feet. And these have really helped me so considerably just by changing position. When you ride sometimes for 10 hours, you want to change position, otherwise <laughs> you'd be in a bad, bad shape. I have here a Roadhouse two into one exhaust Roadhouse pipes are my favorite pipes. Unfortunately, the company went under. It might be bought again, and I hope, because they made such high quality pipes, beautiful sound. I have here a Korea King magnetic tank bag where I keep my, my snacks and my directions. This piece of paper right here is my GPS. I don't believe so much in GPSs. I like to think about the land. I like to see a map. I like to make my directions so that my that's my, I guess, Stone Age GPS system. Korea King bottle holder, extremely handy on the road to get your, your bottle and drink. Clean canteen from Chico, our hometown. What else? Some uh, Korea King mirrors and grips. I have here this uh, seat, which I love. It's a Corbin seat made for this motorcycle and uh, it has in particular a backrest which frankly I don't think I could ride such distances without back support. I love this seat. Here's a set of custom-made saddlebags by Leatherworks Inc. out of Stockton, California. They're made specifically for this motorcycle. And as you can see, I have a liking for brown leather. Rational being that A, you're, you're better seen, you're more visible wearing brown, having brown on your bike, light brown than you would if everything was, was black. You can be seen at night and you fry in the sun. And I don't want my stuff to fry in the sun, so I'd rather have light brown. Here I have my set of uh, GV waterproof roll bags, which give me much, much needed extra cargo. I keep all my camping gear in these bags. On this side, I have my, uh, my sleeping bag. I have my camping pillow. I have my sleeping pad and uh, a bit of extra warm clothing. And on the other side, I have my, uh, my um, tent with also a warm vest for these colder days or evenings. And um, I want also to draw your attention to the fact that I made, I had this, this uh, canvas cover custom made to give extra protection to my gear. It sports on the back sort of an oversized bumper sticker that express my uh, philosophy behind riding at uh, 60 miles per hour. Less gas, less money spent, more freedom, it works for me. Inside the uh, 
at the top of the cover is a cut windshield heat shield to protect a little bit against uh, excess uh, heat and uh, sun in the desert. I carry here my uh, armored jacket, which I wear mostly at night or when it gets cold. Otherwise, I tend to only wear my, uh, my vest. And this is a Route 66 trunk bag that normally you would use vertical. I wanted to have it flat. So my Corbin seat in particular was cut specifically to be flush with my luggage rack. So the back would rest half on the seat and half on the luggage rack. And inside is where I keep my electronics. I have my, my laptop. I have my sound bag, microphone pouch. Some cables and connectors, what have you. I have my, uh, that's where I keep my, uh, my camera and my main microphone. Here is a tiny projector, which I use to have public presentations. Where I go sometimes, I present the project and show some videos. That's a tiny Bluetooth speaker. Here are my portable hard drives where I, I copy all my footage on the road. And I even have some posters which I use on the road when I have some public events. So that is our logo. That's my proud steed in uh, Monument Valley. I was camping there. It was a treat. Let me tell you that. Well, some more posters. Anyway. And I, on the sides, I have some extra bag. I have some uh, emergency kit. And I also have a, a shoe shine kit, which is important. I like to keep my leathers in good condition.